Hey, what is up, guys? It is me, Parksy here, your coach of the Arma Armada. Who's bringing back to Smash today here for DHBA Season Nine, Week Number Three, where your Arma Armalus are going to be taking on Luke and the Denver Big Nuggets. This is going to be a very intense battle. Apologies for Spoink being there, uh, but basically this is copied from my uh, spreadsheet, um, which is amazing, by the way, because it has all my analytical info on based on type. Uh, matchups and as you can see speed tiers and things like that and they're uh, just lists of information about what could be a good Pokemon in the battle and just all damage calculations and things but the one thing that I haven't uh, I guess done is change the names around so uh, yeah I guess we're going against uh, Spongy yeah but no we're going against Luke and Luke is a very tough and tricky opponent to play not just uh, strictly uh, based on this season it is actually uh, a bit of a a thing where uh, Luke pretty much uh, handed me my first 6-0 loss in a draft league format, I believe, in the DGBA Season 5, uh, week number 2, which you can actually find on this channel, so if you go scroll back about a year or two ago, you can find that, uh, and there's actually no microphone issues on that, it just, uh, my laptop crashed. Bit of backstory to that video as well. I believe my la my laptop also crashed, and the game was freshly in my head for that battle. So I was double tilted that uh, time that I was recording the video. And as you can probably tell if you actually do go back and watch it, yeah, you'll see that I did get a little bit salty uh, during it. We're going against Luke, and as I said previously, uh, there's also a very tough battle in regards to the season because Luke is the number two person so far in this league and I'm the number one person I of course have got a 2-0 uh, record plus nine differential and Luke has got a 2-0 record plus eight differential so one differential between us and pretty much all to play one of us is going to be leaving this game with the zero loss uh, pretty much knocked off us and we can't say that we are undefeated anymore so it's the Clash of the Titans for this battle, uh, but I'm going to be really excited to go up against Luke. As you can see, my team is on the left, his team is on the right. He's got a team of Tornadus, Therian, Latios, that is Mega, Lycanroc, Dusk, Elect, Buzz, Mian, Chai, Crocodile, Rose Raid, Vigoroth, Tapafini, Bronzong, and Crufire. I guess I also just want to clarify that this battle occurred around nine months ago when Ultra Sun and Moon was nearing to an end and where pretty much the final uh, seasons of some draft leagues were finishing off as the final few months stretched on over the summer to eventually pave the way for the new Generation 8 draft league format and just gameplay uh, in general. Uh, so that's why Z Crystals are allowed and why things like Dynamax, even though it isn't allowed in many Gen 8 drafts, uh, it isn't allowed either. Um, but yeah, we're playing up against uh, Luke. He has got a pretty threatening team. However, there are definitely things that they can uh, nitpick about his team and, and try and abuse. Uh, some things that they can notice, of course, is that massive speed gap between the likes of Tapu Fini to Bronzong. Uh, meaning that basically my Pokemon around the base 60 speed tier, most notably my base 60 speed tier walls, such as Swampert, Sylveon and Chestnut, all aren't forced to run a little bit of speed investment so that I can speed creep maybe my opponent's uh, base 60 or 65 um, defensive wall as well so I really just don't have to run any speed in them which is nice I can just invest it all into defense and know that I can outspeed his slower walls such as Bronzong and Kofarig is guaranteed unless he's running a, a, a speedy Bronzong which uh, yeah I, I do think that's um, really been seen in draft league and um, but pretty much as you're going to notice from his team, uh, I'm really going to abuse the fact that he doesn't have reliable recovery on a lot of his walls. Things like Tabu Phoenix, Bronzong, Kufarugus, even though it gets paints, but I wouldn't clarify, classify that as reliable. And then Crocodile, even to some extent, as an AV or a physical defensive wall. They all don't have reliable recovery, and they are going to be um, switching into a lot of my Pokemon's attacks and is going to be his main defensive core. Uh, so with that taken into consideration, I did build quite a, a quite a lot around being able to chip down his walls with the knowledge in my mind that they won't be able to reliably recover back the damage that I deal to them and that whatever damage I do, even if it's a small 5 or 10%, is going to be there to stick and is going to be there to last. But if you guys are new to the channel, 
uh, don't feel free to maybe drop a like if you enjoy this video, no pressure, you don't have to if you don't want to, and also make sure to go check out some of my previous videos, an icon should show up now uh, for a previous DTBA season, uh, because I will be spoiling, of course, some of the results of that battle, maybe referencing some of them in relation to my uh, builder and in the battle just in general. Uh, so if you do feel the need to go watch those videos, they are pretty good. Uh, I did enjoy making them, and I think a lot of other people that viewed them did enjoy make, uh, watching them. Sorry, uh, so you could go check that out. But pretty much, I spent a good five and a half minutes just talking about nonsense. So let's finally get into the team builder. So the first Pokemon on my team is a Mega Scizor. Of course, I really love this Pokemon. Um, previously, I used Scizor in the G in DGBA season uh, seven, which you guys actually didn't get to see because I, of course, had a broken microphone around that stage um, but pre like previously my relationship with Scizor just hasn't been good because it, it just dies so quickly to Hidden Power Fire but at least Mega Scizor now has the tanky nature to live them. Talking about Hidden Power Fire this Pokemon has got enough HP and special defense investment so that and let me pull up my uh, notes um, where is it here here we go so uh, Mega Latios Hidden Power Fire uh, uh, 70% uh, of the time does not knock out this Mega Scizor, so it, the likelihood is that I'll be able to take a hit from it. And then also an offensive Tapu Fini's Hidden Power Fire can knock, knock out my Mega Scizor either. But the most important calc and probably the one why I actually invest is the certain EVs into my Mega Scizor is because I can live two Hidden Power Fires from a physically defensive bronze on which I can see him using as a sort of Mega Scizor lore to weaken me down. And because uh, Mega Scizor actually can set up pretty easily on bronze on being able to of course br uh, bring access uh, to a sword stance set in this game this is going to hopefully be my late game cleaner I've got a whole bunch of calcs and I'm about to get hit you guys with as to why this Pokemon should be my late game sweeper but pretty much a uh, knockoff a plus two Oku zero HP Electabuzz, Coolberryless, Bronzong and Coolberryless Scafarugus after Stealth Rocks, Bullet Punch, Oku's Lycanroc Dusk obviously and plus two Bullet Punch, Oku's Rose Raid, Mianchai, Max HP, Tornius Therian after Stealth Rocks, has a 50% chance to Oku Offensive Crocodile after Stealth Rocks, and does a minimum of 20 of, uh, sorry, 61% to the Tapu Fini, and 79% minimum to Offensive Mega Latios. So I think that that's all really important calx. Of course, you'll see that the two outliers out of not being able to be knocked out by a plus two Bullet Punch or knockoff, respectively, is the Tapu Fini and the Mega Latios and those only need about 30% of chip on them so really all I need to do is just hammer down those Pokemon just a tiny bit so that I can eventually wear them into range of my Mega Scizor where it should hopefully just be able to use the combination of Bullet Punch its bulk plus knockoff if necessary to be able to manhandle uh, the rest of his team so that's pretty much it and the next Pokemon on my team and actually the first time this Pokemon has been brought is Aurorus being able to switch out my Lycanroc Knight for Aurorus um, and of course switch up the rest of my team to a new one you guys have seen in comparison t into week one. Uh, we've got Aurorus and I have decided to add JJ Bizzle because my guy decided to disrespect Aurorus on the DGBA power rankings which is not appreciated whatsoever in the Parksy Town so JJ I would like an apology uh, for disrespecting this Pokemon uh, so yeah add him whatever you want to do in the discord server just make sure he gets the message because i am certainly acting jj bizzle every single time this aurorus comes so i've got a choice scarf variant this allows me to outspeed uh, almost every single member of his team barring the tornado therian i can get a surprise um jump on the mega latios being able to hit it with a stab a uh, blizzard that is also boosted to 100% accuracy in the snow and uh, you'll actually see that I have got the snow warning ability and that's pretty crucial against my opponent because as I said previously Bronzong and Tapu Fini are probably going to be as physically defensive and especially defensive walls and if I can uh, weaken them down um, then that means that my Mega Scizor should have an easier job of cleaning up at the end of the game for instance, uh, freeze dry to a Tapu Fini does about 40%, and as I said previously, I only need 70% to get um, the two, the Oko with Mega Scizor's plus two Bullet Punch, so that's literally all I need. And also, Bronzong takes about 20 to 25%. Uh, 
from Blizzard, uh, which might not sound that much, but when you, if you take into consideration the fact that he's constantly going to have to switch it in, uh, and Bronzong is also a really good uh, defensive member to a lot of the rest of my team, uh, then being able to chip that down matters. Also the snow being, or the heal I guess, sorry, being able to negate my opponent's leftovers recovery is going to be really nice because they literally cannot do anything uh, to heal their Pokemon back up unless they're running some sort of weird rest set, which again he's got Misty Terrain so that probably wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, he doesn't have uh, many good reliable recovery uh, options on this defensive Pokemon so I really plan to abuse that. Earth Power is just a third move that I didn't really have anything better that I wanted to run on this Pokemon. Aurorus doesn't really have the best move pool but uh, Earth Power allows me to hit the Electabuzz and the Lycanroc Dusk for slightly harder as well as also potential Spadef Heat uh, heat proof uh, Bronzong that he can bring as a potential um, response to my Volcanion uh, with Earthquake. And then finally we got the Stealth Rocks and this is sort of to be played like a choice band Mamo Swine or something like that where if you expect your opponent to switch and often I'll expect them to switch out into the bronze one because it is quite a free switch out uh, then I can set up my stealth rocks and then again be able to pressure things like Tornadus um, and the uh, Latios into range of my Mega Scizor as I said previously all I need is stealth rock damage off the Tornadus there yet, and even if he is max HP he will drop to a plus two bullet punch that is just the power of Max Attack, Adamant, Mega Scizor, but pretty much that is it, um, nothing else to really clarify on the Aurora, it's just a very good mid game to early game breaker that can set up Stealth Rocks, and really pressure is only Defogger that I believe will come in this game, that is the Tapu Fini, uh, being able to hit it for about a 3 to 2 hit, well yeah about a 3 hit KO uh, with Freeze Dry. The next member of my team is Zygarde and yet again this is designed so my Aurorus is more of an early game breaker this is a mid game breaker and uh, this is running the ground DMZ so I previously ran weakness policy draconium Z ground DMZ I just want to run every single Zygarde in existence maybe choice band will come next who knows so we have got a pretty interesting set of very bulky Zygarde with the coil dragon and substitute and thousand arrows if you actually look at my opponent's team and this is what I meant with having a few nip about it he doesn't have any response whatsoever on his draft 2000 arrows he um, has things like flying type Pokemon that deal really well against the standard ground type Pokemon uh, like Excadrill and uh, like basically your high tier ground types like Garchomp and things like that but they can't actually stand up to a thousand arrows since that'll hit them neutrally and even his grass type is a rose raid so that'll be hit pretty hard especially if it's offensive so pretty much the idea of this set is to send it in on a defensive wall such as bronze on a go fire I guess and thanks to the investment in the HP a shadow ball nor dryer ball from those two can actually break my substitute and I can start setting up coils very nice in case I want to set up on a non-toxic a uh, Crocodile, which he shouldn't be anyway on a Misty Surge team, but you never know. Um, and also the Lycan Rock Dusk, and then I've also got Dragon Dance because after Dragon Dance, of course, I can always beat the entirety of his team again. Substitute is able to take blows from the Bronze on Gufargus and any status he might throw at me just in case. And uh, this is a really good breaker of the Tapu Fini again. I just need Tapu Fini to take about 50% of damage, and then it'll all be good with plus 1000 arrows being able to do about, well, not 1000 arrows, sorry, Ground EMZ being able to do about 60 to 70%, and then a plus 2 being able to do. 90% and uh, yeah this is pretty much just a good breaker versus this team uh, with a dual setup and mono thousand arrows attacking which is really all I need uh, and yeah just a good defensive wall uh, again ag against uh, some of his other Pokemon such as the Lycanroc Dusk I can see this being my defense as a response to it uh, since spoilers I don't actually bring Swamp Bird into this battle um, but it's a good defensive response to that and maybe even Crocodile if it comes down to it the next Pokemon on my team is Sylveon and a lot of the and a few of the guys on the DGPA recap power rankings thing did reference my weakness to flying type uh, style uh, with my only responses to flying types being the Aurorus and my Heliolisk and if you notice those two are hitting very strong with a fighting type attack Aurorus being of course 
pretty much nuked by any uh, fighting type attack. So that's why I've got Sylveon pretty much as my main response to Tornadus being able to cheat any hit it wants to fire off, even being able to lift things like Stelium Z Iron Tail that I might want to go for, and then being able to chew those up and go for a wish as well. This is the defensive cleric on my team. It was defense to allow it to lift things like the crocodile attacking it, uh, and then maybe if he wants to run something like a dragon dance, Mega Latios, who knows. But this has got the Tom Pass Hyper Voice Protect and Wish. Very standard, of course, Hyper Voice being able to hit uh, things like the Lycan Rock Dusk, of course, so that we don't want it to set up to plus six and sweep my team. And, the, and then but Tom Pass is nice because I expect his, off, his switch into this Pokemon to not be the Bronze Oink, but to actually be the Rose Raid. Because especially when he sees the team that I bring, something like a three attacks Rose Raid with Giga Dream, Hidden Power Fire, and Extra Sensory and Synthesis can actually do a lot of damage versus my team. Team and really hit it hard so being able to baton pass every time I expect the Rose Raid to come out and get in an offensive pivot like my Mega Scizor to threaten that is going to be something that I am going to take a lot of value in and it is just a very nice momentum user in general. Also being able to get off a slow baton pass so I can pass wishes into some other defensive Pokemon on my team. This is really, uh, again, going back to him not having reliable recovery. The difference between his team and my team is that I actually have a, a reliable wish passer. I actually, well, I have a wish passer full stop uh, on my team. And again, as I said, my Zygarde might have to take some very powerful hits. It might have to take things like Choice Band Crocodile attacks. It might have to take things like plus two Lycan Rock Dusk's drill runs. Uh, so I really just have to make sure that I can keep that thing healthy if it does come to the situation uh, where it is going to have to be more of a tank and take a few more hits. Uh, but again, I do need Zygarde as a breaker as well. So being able to potentially give it a second life by firing a wish into it is going to be maybe the make or break in this game so that's pretty much it nothing much to say against Silvio and just his typing deals uh, really nicely against uh, his team as next up on my team I have got Heliolisk uh, bringing it once more uh, as we are rocking an Assault Vest Heliolisk and this is a really interesting set because it allows me to respond to the Tornado Therian better uh, this Pokemon can live one Focus Blast uh, from a Tornado Therian it can also never be uh, I believe 4 hit KO by a Hurricane so it constantly switch into those Hurricanes and be able to take them as well as also the fact that Sylveon can pass uh, a Wish every now and again into it. Of course I will have to scout the Tornado for Super Power and and if I was Lukey, I would Luke, sorry, I would be running something like Hurricane Super Power U turn and defog on my tornadoes. Uh, but who knows, he could switch some other moves up. I might just not run Super Power in general. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be one of my main offensive checks to swing it as Therian and just to his team in general being able to get off some very fast momentum with the Volt Switch. Uh, also can be a more reliable check to the Tapu Fini with the Assault Vest as Moonblast is never a 3 KO on my Heliolisk from a defensive Tapu Fini. Uh, so I can switch into it better and offensively pressure it with Thunderbolt because again, all I need is just about 50% of damage off Tabu Tabu Fini. Sorry, which is what that my which is what my Heliolisk is very good at doing, just spamming Volt Switch versus his team. Uh, and then I've got Surf on it as well, which can deal a lot of damage to the Crocodile, which is his only electric immunity on his team. And then finally, I also have Dark Pulse, which can Turkey with the Mega Latios, well, an offensive Mega Latios after Stealth Rocks. Uh, so that with all that's well, with all that said. Um, it's good Pokemon, pretty fast versus his team. I can just hit him pretty hard being able to chip down the members. His next up is Crobat. And this is the final member of my team. Honestly, guys, I'm just going to throw this out here now. I absolutely love Crobat. It's such a good Pokemon. It can just come so many times. Uh, a week just as a defensive Pokemon. I'm pretty sure I brought it three times now as like my... Um, just a defensive Pokemon and still I've been able to run max attack and it still can take hits which is absolutely incredible this Pokemon has got Brave Bird, U-Turn, Defog and Roost and um, this is probably my best Defog reverse sim in the game being able to take hits from the Crocodile as well as the Bronze on Brave Bird is very good stab versus my opponent's team as you'll notice he only has resistances in the Lycan Rock Dust and the Electabuzz which are quite frail and then the Bronze Zone which is probably the main one 
So I can chip down the bronze on and potentially like the electables or whatever with a little bit of damage. Brave Bird could potentially be able to sweep my opponent's team also due to the fact that Crowback can outspeed the entirety of my opponent's team barring any true scarfers uh, being able to outspeed it with a very nice base 130 speed tier. And also I just do have the U-turn for a uh, potential momentum chain that I might want to go for uh, again with the likes of Heliolisk or Sylveon and I also have the Lumberry on this uh, Crobat and it was pretty much because I didn't know what else I could run on my Crobat as item Black Sludge might have been nice but I just really only need this Pokemon alive unless Hazard Stack really becomes an issue then I might need to come might need to invest in its HP a little bit more uh, just so that I can come in on the likes of a Bronzong, a Defog, a potential Hazard Stack or things like that. But Lumberry allows me to take hits from the Kofaragus going for Will-O-Wisp uh, and it also allows me to switch in a little bit easier to a Tapu Fini going for Skulls in case I do need to wear it down into a range again of my Mega Scizor with being able to fire off a Brave Bird that does about 40 to, well about yeah 40% to the Tapu Fini. Again, just a really good speedy Pokemon versus his team. Uh, I really do need to bring this Pokemon because his bruise rate is a threat. Uh, but with that said, let's get on to my team. Uh, so just to clarify, my team is Mega Scizor, Aurorus, Zygarde, Sylveon, Heliolisk, and Crobat as my opponent, Luke. I'm thinking is going to bring the Tornadus Therian again, probably a three attacks variant, very speedy. Um, Tornadus could even see it rocking the fly in EMZ since he doesn't really have any good Z users on his draft. I almost forgot to say as well, but I'm glad I, I can clarify it now, is that he doesn't actually have a fire type Pokemon to hit my Mega Scizor Stab, so that's going to be very useful in this match to keep track of as well, as he did actually trade Lola Marowak, I believe week two uh, for Kufaru. Um, so that's definitely going to help first my team a lot. I'd rather play a fire against than a little Marowak with my uh, Mega Scizor. Uh, as next, he has got the Tapu Fini again, probably going to be a defensive defogger. If the Tornadus is not going to be running defog, I can potentially see the Tornadus actually running taunt instead. Uh, but something like a, a maybe a taunt defog, Nature's Madness, um, Scald variant could do a lot of work versus my team. Again, his probably his probably his best physical sponge versus my mom's being able to take hits from the Zygarde and then also the Mega Scizor. As next is the Rose Raid, again could be three attacks, synthesis slash spikes. Talking spikes is also an option versus my team as my uh, poison, poison type is Crobat and of course it is a flying type Pokemon, it is not grounded so it cannot cannot absorb T spikes um, so yeah just a really good offensive Pokemon that forces me to play very cautiously around it so I'm pretty sure Rose Raid will be coming as well as it is one of his best offensive responses to my Swamp which otherwise will give him team uh, for, well which get, will give him uh, trouble uh, from just a defensive bulky standpoint versus his team. The next Pokemon is Mega Latios which I could see being like a hidden power fire psychic a uh, calm mind roost variant it could also be his defensive defogger but um, I don't think that you really want to uh, use especially in a matchup where Mega Latios can do really well as an offensive variant I don't think you want to run it as your defogger um, and also this is going to be his main response to my Volcanion I can assure you that being able to take a steel stab and then sludge bomb not being able to do that much to a Mega Latios I also think he's going to bring a Crocodile just because this is his ground port ground type uh, it can uh, take on the Heliolesk it also provides him a good response uh, to several other members of my team being able to knock off it can also aerial ace my chestnut if needs be uh, but it can also be a potential uh, it could be really three options it could be stealth rocker but again I've got bronze on so I don't think it's going to be the stealth rocker I mean it can be brought as stealth rocks um, but I think a more likely set would either be uh, a choice set, probably choice scar, so I can outspeed uh, pretty much the entirety of my team, uh, being able to get a surprise knockout potentially run uh, turn one on the Azelf, or else a choice ban set in case he wants to fire off huge amounts of damage. And a Sulfest also allows him to be a really good bulky response to my Azelf, which could also be an option, as well as also being able to live about three surfs from my Heliolisk, which he could find helpful as well. Uh, but again, I think Crocodile plus his intimidated ability being able to act as a pseudo response to my. My uh, Zygarde plus Ice Fang can be 
an option that he wants to go with as well. As finally is Bronze on, which is just a very good defensive stealth rocker, especially defensive. Probably is most likely to deal with things like my Auroras and Choice Back Sylveon versus this team. Uh, and it can just set up stealth rocks and predict some sort of set like a Gyro Ball, uh, Toxic, Hidden Power Fire, um, Stealth Rock set. Although I guess since he has got Misty Terrain. Uh, he can also run things like Protect as well on the Bronze Song. It really depends how aggressive of a player Luke is around his Misty Terrain and how much he really values being able to Toxic Potential Pokemon on my team. Uh, but without further ado, let's go get into the battle. Okay guys, so we are here with the DBA Season 9 Week Number 3 battle again versus Luke. And he has decided to bring a team of Vigoroth, Tornitus, Atherian, Rose Raid, Tapu Fini, Latios, and Bronzong. Now I'm going to do this off the top of my head, so I'm sorry if I forget a Pokemon, but he did not bring the Lycanroc Dusk, the Electabuzz, the Mianchai, the Kofaragus, and the Crocodile, and I managed to at least guess five out of the six Pokemon of his team correctly, so I think that's probably the best that I've done thus far. Of course, he didn't bring his Crocodile, however, and instead he brought the Vigoroth, which is very interesting, because I've I've never played a Vigoroth before in Draft League format, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see if this thing poses a, a threat. But of course, lo knowing Luke, he's probably bought it for a very specific reason and something that maybe I just don't realize or don't know. And as you're about to see throughout the entirety of this battle, the Vigoroth is actually quite a considerable threat that I did overlook, just like Spunk's Mega Kangaskhan last week, so it's definitely obvious now that I'm overlooking these normal types as threats versus my team. But uh, he got 5 out of the 6 of the Pokemon that I was expecting, but he didn't bring Crocodile, which means that once again this is going to be a game where Heliolisk can very easily spam a Volt Switch. He only brought 2 resistances in the Rose Raid and the Mega Latios, both of which uh, being able to chip them down is going to be very nice uh, and you're going to see in this lead I actually decide to lead off with the Heliolisk because I feel like it is the best lead versus my opponent's team it can deal with pretty much every single lead that he wants to go with barring the Mega Latios which I don't think is a lead anyway uh, and even if he leads Tornadus then that might be a bit of an issue to scout out its set but I do have viable Pokemon to switch into it uh, and respond to it to check up uh, its moves uh, plus also Heliolisk allows me to respond best to a Focus Sash Rose Raid uh, Hazard Stack lead as I can full switch out into my Crobat and then either decide to go for the U-Turn Brave Bird or uh, Defog there. Any three of those options are very useful and I can uh, get a lot of mileage out of them. But as I said previously, I'm going to lead off of my uh, Heliolisk. Again, it's going to be very important in this game to wear down that Tapu Fini into range of my Mega Scizor, uh, as that looks like a very good win con, especially now that the Vigoroth has been shown to be there, something which is quite dependent on the Violite, and which Mega Scizor can knock off. So I'm about to go start up a battle as I lead off with the Heliolisk, and you're actually going to see he leads off with the Tornadus Therian. So I might be a, a little bit ahead of myself, but of course, Tornadus Therian. Uh, is able to outsuit my Heliolisk. I'm not sure Scarf, I'm just uh, Assault Vest, so instead I'm actually going to make the Scout play by going out into my Crobat. This allows me easy momentum into whatever Pokemon he wants to go for, and it also allows me to Scout not only for the Superpower, but also the potential Iron Tail uh, that he might go for. Uh, well, not actually the Iron Tail, just the Superpower for this, uh, as I do Quad Resist. And here he's going to Mega Evolve his Mega Latios. I'm just going to go for a U turn, and that damage is crucial because now it's in range of plus two Bullet Punch, and the damage has shown that it is a very offensive Latios. I do get in my Sylveon and it's going to be able to take the Psy Shock relatively well. I mean, uh, I, it does more than I would have liked, but uh, you know, Sylveon can at least take two more of those, um, so I am glad that uh, it can do that. As here I'm going to Baton Pass, he should go right into the Rosary train to get offensive pressure versus me, as he does, so instead I'm going to be able to go and Baton Pass. I'm going to be able to get a little bit more momentum on my opponent, which is nice. Being able to scout out such a creative player such as Luki uh, on what sets he's bringing and other things is going to be important. As here, I bring in my Crobat, as I am just going to go fire off uh, another U-turn as he does decide to bring out the Tornado, something which doesn't mind being U-turn chips due to its fact that it gets Regenerator. So I'm going to go for U-turn here, and I am actually going to be able to get out my Auroras here, uh, because I am going to be able to threaten him. However, I'm going to pull a switch once more out into my Crobat, uh, just in case he wants to um, 
reveal either Iron Teal or Super Power as versus the Heliodisk. He might have feared me being choice Scarf Heliodisk. Um, so he is actually going to go out into the Bronze Zone as I get out my Crobat once again. So again, this gives me probably for about the third time now a really free uh, U-turn versus my opponent. So I'm going to go for that uh, as he does actually show the leftover. So that's going to be very important in terms of making sure that I can actually unofficially um, be able to check this Pokemon and put it into the range that I needed to. Um, as here I just decided to go out to the Zygarde. Bronzong is the best setup fodder. He didn't bring Crocodile, Lycanroc Dusk or Kofiro Gist, so this is pretty much the best thing that my Zygarde could do as he is going to set up Stealth Rocks here and again he is going to be a hit with that heal. As I'm just going to decide to set up a substitute it's completely free. Whatever he goes out into is going to have to try and break the substitute as he does actually show the Tapu Fini. And this is incredible because I do need to get chip damage off from this Tapu Fini to actually make sure that it is in range of my Mega Scizor as this is pretty much the last thing on his team barring maybe a little bit of damage off from the Vigoroth um, to get it into range of my Mega Scizor as um, he, again he is going to be shown to be a leftover set so nothing like Choice Specs or Choice Scarf or anything as I'm just going to set up a Dragon Dance behind my substitute make sure that even if he wants to pull an aggressive switch out and turn it into Tornado Sterian I am putting that Pokemon again into range of Mega a scissor, so he is going to fire off a moon blast here as the heal is going to end. And I'm just going, I'm just going to fire off my grind DMZ because I don't expect him to go out into either of his flying Pokemon. And here I am going to, as you're about to see, hit this Tapu Fini for a massive 72% of damage, really weaken it where it is pretty much not able to take on my Mega Scissor anymore. As here with a moon blast, he's not going to be able to knock out my Zygarde since it is quite a bulky variant and he is uh, pretty much in a bit of a pickle now as he has to say decide what it wants to go into uh, for a plus one Zygarde as he goes out to Vigoroth and I think this thing is going to get blown back but actually it takes it like really well so this is a really bulky physically defensive Vigoroth that I'm taking on um, and that's a bit of an issue since it is able to just chew up the hits and be able to respond to me by firing off a return now something I didn't realize about this Vigoroth is it is actually a bulk up variant with Fire Punch Return and Slack Off so it actually could have set up on my Zygarde there and pretty much threatened the entirety of my team but fortunately I guess Luke decided to spare me this one time um, and decided just to go for the return as here I am going to at least revenge him with my Aurorus realizing that just how little damage my uh, physical attack from my uh, Zygarde is Done. So instead of firing off the blizzard, which is quite obvious, I set up Stealth Rocks, expecting him to again make the obvious play and go out into Bronzong. Those Stealth Rocks again are going to go into a whole a whole way of, of ch checking his team because it can break the Sasha and Rosary potentially, and it can also get Tornadus into guaranteed range by Mega Scizor. Um, so that's all really nice. Is here he is going to be uh, actually a screens variant of bronze on which I find very interesting and quite scary because he can actually uh, potentially set up things like Carmine Mega Latios uh, in the back as well. As uh, here I decide to fire off a Dark Pulse and I do unfortunately get the flinch here, which actually I wouldn't have minded because I believe he actually just will end up going for gyrable spam uh, even if this didn't flinch and I actually wanted um, to keep bronzing around because as I said Mega Scizor is pretty good at setting up in the bronze song and if I got to set up my Mega Scizor that probably would have been a wrap uh, if I get a plus two on my on this bronze song but unfortunately I have to go for the Dark Pulse again I cannot risk going for a Thunderbolt and letting a Mega Latios come in uh, and just set up Carmine's my Heliolisk uh, that pretty much results me um, having to play a really risky game getting in my Crobat and potentially having to sack one or two Pokemon just to check it um, as uh, he is going to come to Tornadus he is just going to be able to get a very free U to knock out my Heliolisk but at least that gives me momentum now being able to respond with whatever Pokemon I want to counter against his Pokemon as uh, I believe he actually does decide to go out into Tapu Fini here because there's just about 20% half of the Stealth Rock so it isn't going to be able to check anything that it was supposed to originally uh, anymore at least in this game uh, the likes of the Mega Scizor is just able to knock it out with a bullet punch now so again no need so uh, I do decide to send out my Aurora's here once again and lock myself into freeze dry as this one ice resistant bronze song is now gone down and I could actually do a lot of damage with this freeze dry Pokemon since it, the Tornadus might not even have fighting and uh, steel attacks because it hasn't shown that previously and I think that you would so uh, yeah this could actually be a pretty good uh, round for Aurora's uh, I could actually pick up a K K K 
KO or two. This goes down to the Rose Ma Raiden, maybe the Troy Scarf variant, I'm not sure, as I fire off the freeze dry. And this is actually especially defensive Rose Raid. That thing should have not taken that freeze dry whatsoever. I'm pretty sure it was easily in a knockout range after the Stealth Rocks. Um, but no, it's especially defensive. And I guess that was one of his ways of being able to deal with my Volcanion if his Megaladios got too weak. So that's a pretty cool prep on uh, Luki's part. So uh, I... Uh, pretty cool as I am just going to be able to go into Crobat and pretty much pick one uh, from my opponent's team as he is just going to sag off the Rose Raid which is fair enough since it seems to be more of a defensive variant it probably wouldn't have been able to check my Megasys worth Hidden Power Fire as well as an offensive variant for example as Hidden Power Fire would probably have been a 2 a kill and would have been able to get me a Sword Stance as here he is going to go out into the Vigoroth and I only have about a 20% chance of knocking this thing out, I do believe, if he is like a really max HP, max defense um, figure off. But fortunately, I do get a little bit lucky and I actually get that little bit of the uh, hacks on my end, I guess. Um, so I am very uh, sorry to that for Luki. Um, your vigor off would have probably been able to uh, do a lot of damage if not sweep my team again. It's a bit of an issue uh, versus Mega Scizor because I can knock off and plus two fire punch doesn't even knock out my Mega Scizor due to my HP investment. Uh, but it is definitely a bit of a back and forth game as to whether he can actually knock it out. So I guess that's just a game uh, matter of what ifs by that point. But I am a, I am able to get off a Braper which pretty much means if he was a max HP max defense tornadoes which he isn't uh, but if he was then I would have been able to revenge with Megasys or very easily and knock out with a bullet punch as here he is going to be forced to switch out his tornadoes and bring in the Megaladios as here with my scissor I am just going to be able to fire off a bullet punch and what's actually funny is you're about to see as my Mega Evolution fires off he is actually going to be able to live this with his Megaladios so he, if he was a hidden power variant he could have actually lived this hit uh, and then maybe brought down the differential to a 1-0 but instead the, my Mega Scizor is now going to be able to fire off two more bullet punches and knock him out. Now going back to the previous Zygarde uh, turn where he actually set, sent in his uh, Vigoroth and returned me and got down to 40%. If he actually set up then that could have been a lot more of an issue since uh, the, apparently the Vigoroth was supposed to be able to set up even on the Zygarde um, and yeah it would have taken me a turn or two to scout it well it would have actually been able to get a bulk up so uh, that would have been definitely a problem. Um, I. Uh, I mean, I, I'm about. I was about to say uh, I wish I didn't get the the hacks and the bronze on, but that just makes me sound, I guess, a little bit jammy. I, I can't really be um, upset about um, getting some hacks that were definitely beneficial, as the bronze on could have been able to just uh, get a bit more damage off on his Heliolisk, or he could have set up another screen. I'm not really sure. It was again nine months ago, but uh, fortunately we are able to get a nice 2-0 win versus uh, Luke on the Denver Big Nuggets. So we are now 3-0 with a plus 11 differential which is incredible uh, in this league. Uh, usually I start off and I'm only like one or two or something, but this time I just set my mind to it and I decided that I really wanted to just um, build a team that was really centered around Zygarde since that's something that I usually fail to do in drafts is build around my first round pick just exclusively in this time. I was like, nothing else, just build around Zygarde all the Pokemon are designed around it and that's why I got like spike support, that's why I got lots of momentum, that's why I got really good water immunities and grass resistance things like that but I'm not going to keep you guys behind that much uh, this video I knew that I was talking a couple minutes um, with the last video and it sort of dragged on but uh, pretty much if you do want to go see the other DTBA uh, videos week 2 and week 1 I'll highly recommend going to check them out uh, so you can just go and check my recent uploads they should be just uh, uh, made um, it should be the past uh, two videos uh, to three videos so you shouldn't have to scroll back that much uh, and if you did enjoy make sure to go leave a like uh, again I am very recently back to YouTube after of course having some microphone and laptop issues and just being burnt out of YouTube in general uh, but I am uh, slowly getting my way back into it so if you guys did enjoy this video please make sure to leave a like uh, I'd really appreciate it also make sure to go check out the links down below the DGBA YouTube channel the DGBA discord since they are great guys for allowing me to uh, really allow to to play in their uh, league so um that's pretty much me thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you do want to watch these videos weekly and get reminded every single time uh but thank you guys for watching and uh peace